In this movie, we're going to have a look at the reshape tools. They're amazing and can be used to reshape paths and customize shapes with your Wacom pen. In this movie, you'll try them out using the warp, pucker, bloat and wrinkle tools to give your artwork your own unique style. Now, I'm in Reshape Girl 01 and you can open that up as well. It's in the Project Files folder in Illustrator Wacom in the Characters folder. And in here, I have some basic shapes that I've built from primitives using the Shape Builder tool. And what I want to do now is just give them a little bit more in terms of shape. So what I'm going to do is just isolate this shape so I can double click it. And that's going to isolate the shape so that I can start working on it with my reshape tools. Now I've set up the radial menu on my Wacom tablet to be able to access my brushes. So I'm going to access my reshape brush by clicking on that. So I click on brushes and I have my reshape brush. Now if I want to get to the options, I can double click on the brush and you can see that I can use pressure sensitivity with this brush in order to warp my artwork. Now the warp tool is really fantastic. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to use my wheel to scroll and zoom so that I can see my artwork a little bit clearer. And then I'm going to toggle to the hand tool using the express keys. So a combination of the two just to get my artwork in place. Now the brush is a little bit small. A lot of the brushes in Illustrator support the touch ring, but unfortunately the warp tool doesn't. So in order to adjust the brush, you have to hold down the Alt modifier, and that allows you just to bring the brush size up or down. And now we can start to push bits in and pull bits out using this warp tool, just to try and create a bit more of a human body shape, rather than it looking like it was made from a bunch of primitives, which of course it was. So using this, you can start to get really much more organic shapes to the body. So let's have a look at, so we've done a little bit of that. So let's have a look at uh, one of the arms, perhaps. Or let's go into a little bit more detail on the neck here. Let's bring our brush down in size again, using the option modifier, which would, of course, be Alt on the PC. And let's just pull the neck in a little bit, make that a little bit softer. OK, once we've done that, we need to come out of isolation mode. So we jump back out of isolation mode. And let's have a look at this arm. So I'm going to hold down the Command Express key to select the arm and then let go and start to push and pull bits around for the arm. Try and get rid of some of those creases there that make it too obvious that it was created using primitive shapes. We're starting to make the arm a little bit more organic, pushing bits out and pulling bits in. Now, there are also other tools available. And if you click and hold on the reshape tools, you can pull out a little strip of tools, which give you access to other things like we have the pucker and bloat tools, which allow you to make things bigger or smaller. Again, hold down the Alt key to modify that. And then I can just make her muscles a little bit bigger. Now, that's a little bit too much, so I might want to bring them down again just by using the pucker tool. So gradually just pushing and pulling paths out using these tools means that you don't have to go in and edit paths individually. So fantastic tools to use. Incidentally, if we go to our layers panel and select the clothes layer, and we'll just hide our body layer for a second, let's just isolate the t-shirt. So double clicking will isolate the t-shirt. Now it's telling me I'm going to go and edit a symbol definition. Any edits to the symbol will be applied to all of the instances. So I'm OK with that at the moment, but if you're not, you can say break link and that will break the link to the symbol so that we're only adjusting this instance of it. So we'll double click it, bring it into isolation mode, and we can use things like the wrinkle tool to add a little bit of interest to the clothes as well. Start to wrinkle the edges of them. Now, I don't know if you can see that very clearly, so let's just go back to our scroll and zoom. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm actually putting a little bit of detail into the edges of the clothes, making them a little less perfect. We can do that to the edge of the trousers here as well, just put a little bit of wrinkle in if we weren't in isolation mode. OK, so you can use these tools just to roughen up edges. We could maybe scallop the edge of the neck as well a little bit. That's a little bit too much, but you get the idea. Just use these tools to roughen up edges, grow and shrink shapes and try and make your artwork look a little less rigid and a little bit more customised.